December, it's Miss Avery, and I'm super excited to start our new series, The Big Give. But first, I have a present in this box. My friend, Pastor Marcy, gifted it to me. Can you guys guess what's inside? She gave me three clues. It's prickly, green, and can bring lots of joy. Hmm. Is it a cactus? Or a porcupine? Wait, they're not green. Let's see. Oh, it's a Christmas tree. She's right, a Christmas tree does bring a lot of joy, especially when we decorate it with ornaments and presents. We kick off December with an Old Testament prophecy found in Isaiah 9, six through seven. The story of Christmas begins with promises that God made long before Jesus was born. God's people had been waiting for hundreds of years for God to send the Savior. Many gave up hope, but God was still working in the background. The promises God made and fulfilled remind us that God's plans are best. Remember, God always has a plan. Our worship song this month is called Go and Tell It. Let's stand together and worship. Welcome to Story Lab. This week, we're celebrating Christmas. While we take a look at the story of someone who recorded a big promise, 
for us. Oh, and also look out for this. Hey, I'm Skylar. And I'm Sebastian. We're talking about Christmas, which is celebrating Jesus, God's greatest gift. Gotta say, I think you got the decorations on point. Thank you. We're only missing one thing. A partridge in a pear tree? I can go get one. We need snow. Yeah, but it's 53 degrees and sunny. I thought about that. We're gonna make our own snow. What do we need? The internet says that there are a lot of ways to do that. I say we should make our own recipe, then we can have a showdown or a snowdown. I see what you did there. I'm ready. Let's, Let's make, make it. it. For our first DIY snow, you just need two ingredients, cornstarch and lotion. Step one, dump all the cornstarch in the bowl. Step two, mix a bunch of lotion. We got everything. Now listen closely because the next part is extremely complex and technical. Just squish it. <laughs> Wait, that's it? Yeah. I mean, you just have to mix it up for the perfect consistency for a big fat snowball coming right at you. Ta-da! Not bad. It's no good. But mine will be snow much better. For this next DIY snow, you're also only going to need two ingredients. Baking soda and shaving cream. First step, pour a box of baking soda into a bowl. Step two, pour in the shaving cream. This is so satisfying, like cranking self-serve ice cream. Mmm, with all the toppings. Now, mix it up really well. This is gonna take like two or three minutes to get right, I think. Now this is superior snowball snow right here. Superior to what? I think that's obvious. There's only one way to decide. Cornstarch and lotion up first. Ready? Sure. Let it go, let it go. Can't. That's so 2013. Were you even born in 2013? Yes. <laughs> Here it goes. It moves. That's right. Three, two, one. Ooh, let's see that again. Ooh, look at that impact. I'll give it to you, that was pretty good. Okay, my turn. Sure, I bet yours is going to explode into thousands of pieces midway through. You wish. Here we go. Not, not that bad. I think we should try them side by side. Yeah, let's try that. <laughs> All right. Okay. You got one? Yep. Okay, ready? Three, two, two one. one. Okay, I'll give it to you. Cornstarch and lotion, but only, only because your throw was better than mine. I'll take it, I'll take it. That was awesome. Can we do it again? Absolutely. But first, let's get ready for... The story before the story. Today, we're in the 23rd book of the Old Testament, Isaiah. In the beginning, out of love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God made a plan to bless the whole world through Abraham's family, the Israelites. But over and over, God's people would run to God and then pull away, just like a yo-yo. After King David's son Solomon, the kingdom of Israel was split into two nations. During this time, God spoke through prophets to encourage them to turn their hearts back to God and to tell them about the rescuer God would send. One of these prophets was a man named Isaiah, which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey, everybody. Hey, 
America. Isaiah lived more than 700 years before Jesus. And get this, his name means the Lord saves us. Think about that. Even Isaiah's name pointed to God's plan to save the Israelites and the whole world. Isaiah was a prophet, someone who listens to God and then shares truth from God with other people. Often this is a message about events that will take place in the future. Then I heard the voice of the Lord. He said, who will I send? Who will go for us? I said, here I am, send me. Isaiah lived in Jerusalem. Though Jerusalem was still free, the northern part of Israel had been conquered by the Assyrians. With enemies closing in, Isaiah knew it was only a matter of time until the rest of the Jewish people were taken captive too. Isaiah served as an advisor to the king, but many of the messages that he shared also spoke about a time far into the future, a time when God would send someone to rescue God's people forever. The people who are living in darkness will see a great light. They are now living in a very dark land, but a light will shine on them. That light Isaiah was writing about wasn't an actual light. It was a person, a savior, and that savior was going to come in the most unusual, unexpected way. A child will be born to us. A son will be given to us. He will rule over us. And he will be called Wonderful Advisor and Mighty God. He will also be called Father Who Lives Forever and Prince Who Brings Peace. Isaiah wrote that a savior would come as a baby. Now, remember, this is over 700 years before Jesus was born. Let's take a look at what Isaiah said would be true of the Savior God would send. Spoiler alert, we know the Savior or rescuer is Jesus. Wonderful advisor. That's true, right? When we aren't sure what to do, Jesus directs and guides us. He knows exactly what we need. Even when we face the most difficult challenges, we can always trust him to lead us in the right direction. Now consider mighty God. Jesus is stronger and more powerful than any earthly king. Just think of the amazing things that Jesus did. I mean, he made people who were blind see and healed people of all kinds of sickness. He turned one small lunch of bread and fish into a feast for thousands of people. And when he spoke to a storm, it listened and stopped right away. Father who lives forever. Jesus will live and reign forever. He was with God in the beginning and he'll never leave us. Like a good father, he provides everything that we need. He always wants to spend time with us and delights in us, even before we do anything for him. Prince who brings peace. When people turned from God, the world was broken. When Jesus laid down his life for us and rose again, he made peace between people and God. When we believe in Jesus and follow him, our relationship with God is restored. We can have life forever with God. In the end, Jesus will bring an end to all conflict and all wars. And in Jesus, everything that is broken will be made whole. These are amazing promises, but Isaiah wasn't finished with his picture of the rescuer God was going to send. There will be no limit to how great his authority is. The peace he brings will never end. He will rule on David's throne and over his kingdom. He will make the kingdom strong and secure. His rule will be based on what is fair and right. It will last forever. The Lord's great love will make sure that happens. He rules over all. From the very beginning, God had a plan to rescue the Israelites, right? Even when things seemed dark and hopeless, God was making a way, not just for the Jewish people, but for all of us to be saved. And it would all depend on a tiny, helpless baby. But that's a story for next time. Mind blown. I mean, it's incredible how everything came together. God's always at work, even when we don't see it. So what's our part in this story? Glad you asked. Well. 
just like for the Israelites during the time of Isaiah, things can look pretty dark. We hear about terrible things happening all over the world all the time. And there are probably some things going on in your own life that don't make sense either. Maybe your best friend is moving away, or your mom just lost her job and you can tell your parents are really worried. Yeah, or you might be like my friend, where she has a condition where she has to go into the hospital every month for treatment. It's tough, and none of these things seem to make sense. But even when you can't see the way forward, remember that Jesus is our wonderful advisor. Our mighty God and Father who reigns forever. Our Prince of Peace. Exactly, and you can trust that God has a plan, and that in the end, everything that's wrong and confusing will be made right. Now that's something to celebrate. For sure. I'll see y'all next time. Bye, Bye, Erica. So here's the thing. God always has a plan. I have a plan for the rest of this snow. Hey. <laughs> Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See you next time. <laughs> All right. Good shot. Good shot. Good throw. What do you like to get wrapped up in? Maybe it's your favorite video game. You're so lost in the game that when mom calls you for dinner, your hands are cramped up and you realize you didn't get your homework done. Or maybe you like to get wrapped up in a great book. You turn page after page and when you reach the end, it's way past lights out. So you're gonna be so tired tomorrow. <laughs> You can even get wrapped up in a package of Christmas cookies. You take one, and another, and one more, until all the chocolatey mint goodness turns into a stomach ache. Ooh! Any good thing can go wrong when you get a little too wrapped up in it. But there's one gift we can open over and over. One gift that will never be too much. At Christmas, we realize God's greatest gift to each one of us, God's Son, Jesus. In Jesus, every wrong is made right. In Jesus, every broken thing is made whole. You just cannot get too wrapped up in celebrating Jesus' amazing love for us. When you live every day with the joy and peace that comes from following Jesus, others can see God at work in you. That's why sharing God's gift of Jesus at Christmas is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. Ah! Oh, hey, good. You're just in time. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Mm hmm. I'm in time to watch you do that. No, to watch our Christmas tree grow. To watch it. I gotta get some water. You know, it's gonna take a long time for a Christmas tree to grow, like, like 10 years. Oh, you of little faith. See? Wow, good work. <laughs> Merry Christmas! Ah! Whoa! Run! 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 Oh! Hello, everybody, and welcome to the So and So Show. As you can see, it's Christmas time, so we really got into the Christmas spirit. Oh yeah! Yeah. Hey, John, how do you like to get into the Christmas spirit? Ah, uh, you know the usual stuff: mm -hmm. singing carols, baking cookies, reenacting Christmas movies with sock puppets. Hi, buddy. Hope you find your dad. Wow, this candy cane forest is ginormous, and I'm singing. And I'm in the forest, and I'm singing! Oh! Oh, 
Where's this? Ah, this is pokey. Yeah. Uh, How do you get in the Christmas spirit? I'm glad you asked. One of my favorite things to do is to go out and buy a few Christmas presents for my family and friends. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah, but what I don't love doing is, is wrapping the presents. Uh -huh. I'm terrible. Look, here's a present that I wrapped. <laughs> See, it's- Oh, a... wow. Sorry. That's yeah. awful. So today I'm very excited because I have found someone to help me with my problem. Oh, cool, who is it? Her name is Cheryl. Uh -huh. I overheard people at the mall saying that she is the best Christmas rapper in the state. Oh, well, I wonder what makes her so special at Christmas yeah, I rapping. I bet she ties really good bows mm -hmm. and then can, can do the little curly thing at the end with the scissors. Uh, I, you know, can, I can never do that. Uh, well, you know what, I also bet she uses the most beautiful wrapping paper in every color with like really unique, one of a kind Christmas design. Yeah, I bet she folds the paper perfectly so it doesn't bunch or crinkle. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you got me excited about Christmas wrapping. I know. I know. Everybody, please welcome. Someone who knows stuff. Woo! <laughs> oh, hey, 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 come on in, come on in. Hi, thank you. Yes, thank absolutely, you. absolutely. Uh, so, good. Cheryl, the legendary Christmas rapper, tell us who you are and what you know. Well, you kind of just did that for oh, me. Uh, whoops, I'm sorry, I'm just so excited. <laughs> oh, no need to apologize. I see my reputation precedes me. That's right, I am so thankful that you're here. I have, I have so many things for you to wrap. Mm. I have uh, this candle for my Aunt Sue, a um, uh, cat calendar for Grandma, she loves cats, and I have for my nephew uh, this card game. Mm. So, can you help? Of course, I can totally wrap those. Oh, right. <laughs> Listen up, people, cause Christmas is here. Brandon's brought some presents for people. He finds the kitty cow enough for grandma, a candle for Aunt Sue, and the last is some cards for Brandon's nephew. Word. What? <laughs> that was awesome. That was, uh, that was quite unexpected. <laughs> uh, unexpected? Yeah. But you've heard of me. I'm Cheryl, the Christmas rapper. Yeah, right. You, you're. Oh, <laughs> Christmas. So you don't you don't actually you don't wrap presents? You <laughs> no. Wrap. Not with paper. Okay. <laughs> Bicycles, candy canes, baby dolls, picture frames. Oh, oh man, this okay. is the best misunderstanding that's ever happened to me. Can, uh, can can you rap about other stuff about Christmas? Of course. Oh, okay. so what should we rap about? Uh, uh, baby cake. Jesus. <laughs> oh, sorry. You said baby Jesus yeah. and you said fruit cake. Hmm. <laughs> How about a mashup? Okay. 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 All right. It's great. God sent baby Jesus on Christmas Day many years ago in a manger he lay. Here's a love for us we cannot measure, but like a fruitcake, it lasts forever! Oh, oh, yes. <laughs> wow, yes. Jesus and fruitcake. Yeah, you don't get closer to Christmas than that. No, you don't. Nope. <laughs> now, my only conundrum um, is that I still don't have a way to actually wrap my gifts. Hmm. Maybe we can figure out how to wrap them together. Yeah, yeah, yeah there we go. <laughs> oh, well, you know what? But first, uh, can you uh, can you uh, get us into our next segment? I can do that. Mm. <laughs> Colored lights hanging up and down the street. Kids are decorating their Christmas tree. I'm running out of rhymes and we're running out of time. So I think we better be yelling. It's Bible story time with Kelly. Oh, oh, yeah. oh. oh man. <laughs> Hey, fellas. Hey, Kellen. Looking good, Kellen. I love that outfit. Thank you, thank you. Gotta spread that Christmas spirit. Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. And speaking of Christmas spirit, I've got some amazing Bible verses today all about God's plan to send Jesus. And that is why we celebrate Christmas. Take it away. These verses come from the book of Isaiah. Now, Isaiah was a prophet in Jerusalem who lived about 700 years before Jesus was born. He told the people of Israel the things that God told him to say. And one really amazing thing that God told him was this. A child will be born to us. A son will be given to us. He will rule over us. Can you guess who the child was that Isaiah wrote about? It was Jesus. God's people were in need of a savior and God had a plan to send his son Jesus. Jesus. 
God told Isaiah what the Savior would be like, and Isaiah wrote it down. He wrote, And he will be called Wonderful Advisor and Mighty God. He will also be called Father who lives forever and Prince who brings peace. Wow! Those are some incredible names that God gave to Jesus. And to help us remember those names, I've got our favorite cheer squad. Let's give it up for Jackie and Dee Dee. Hey, Kellen. Hey, Jackie. Yeah, Dee Dee? What do you think of all these names for the Savior? Hmm. I think they deserve a good beat. Hit it. And super strong, he's there for us all day long. Father forever, Prince of Peace. Father forever, Prince of Peace. He loves us so much, his peace is free. These are his names for eternity. Woo! That is definitely going to help us remember all of those names. Well, let's see what else Isaiah wrote about Jesus. There will be no limit to how great his authority is. The peace he brings will never end. He will rule on David's throne and over his kingdom. He will make the kingdom strong and secure. His rule will be based on what is fair and right. It will last forever. The Lord's great love will make sure that happens. He rules over all. Wow, that is a lot. But let's take a look and see what Jackie and Dee Dee have in store for us. Give me an F, F. Give me an O, O. Give me an R, R. E, V, E, R, forever. His kingdom will last forever. He will rule forever. His peace will last forever. For E, V, E. Nice! But did you guys hear that? God told Isaiah that the Savior would rule forever. No one can ever have more power or authority than he does. God gave Jesus a kingdom that will never end. That's amazing. And it was God's plan from the very beginning. Cheer squad, want to finish this out? Absolutely. Didi, yeah. are you thinking what I'm thinking? Well, if you're thinking about how amazing God's plan is, then yes, that's exactly what I was thinking. <sighs> Twins. A plan was created because of God's love to give us a savior sent from above. Now Jesus will rule forever as king. He gave us his plans and that's why we sing. Great job. Huge thanks to our cheer squad. You crush it every time. Oh, thanks, Kelly. Thanks, Kellen. Oh, Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. That is incredible. Isaiah spoke about who Jesus was and what he would do hundreds of years before Jesus came to earth. Yep. God had a plan to save the world and bring people back into a relationship. And God prepared the way for Jesus through Isaiah. You know, I, I love all the names we have for Jesus. Wonderful advisor, mighty God. <laughs> yep, I'm gonna have all those cheers stuck in my head. Yeah, me too. Thanks for the Bible story, Kellen. Anytime, I'll see you guys next week. You know, we wouldn't even have Christmas if God hadn't sent Jesus. It's just so cool to get to celebrate God's amazing plan. That's true, and it's a good inspiration for Reveal the Question. Mm. What are your plans for Christmas? Hmm, well, God made the ultimate Christmas plans. I'm sure you don't make your plans hundreds of years in advance, but I bet you do have some plans. Like going ice skating, uh, baking cookies. Yeah, or maybe visiting your grandma. 
Uh, you could even make plans with your friends to do something nice, like uh, surprising your teacher with a special gift or uh, singing Christmas carols in a nursing home. Yeah, whatever you plan, I hope you have a wonderful start to this very special season. I'm Brandon. And I'm John. And this has been The So-and-So Show. Let's wrap it. The, Ready? The, okay. And I'm John. And I'm Brandon. And, and this, this is The So-and-So Show that you're listening to. On. 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 Merry Christmas. Now, if you have a ribbon, wrap it around and give it a curl while we all say, wow. Wow, 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 wow. Oh, there it is. That is a wrap, wrap. Oh, man, that's great. Hey, did you, hey, did you, did you put the present in the box? Oh, man. Oh. <laughs> when I wake up, when I wake up, I know that you are with me every step of the way. You're strong enough, you're strong enough to handle any fear that I face. Even things that scare me, cause they seem to be. Sometimes it's hard to stay hopeful in the middle of a tough situation. But when we remember that God has faithfully kept his promises in the past, we can find hope because God will continue to be with us through whatever we face. I can't wait for our lesson next week. See you then.